So in this talk, I'm going to consider the relation between the gradient vector, partial derivatives, and directional derivatives. And the, at the end of this talk, you'll have sort of the right computation idea of how one goes about computing the gradient vector and directional derivatives for most nice functions. Okay. So, so at the end of this talk, you can forget all the subtlety. I mean, you shouldn't. But as far as simple examples are concerned, this really tells you everything about how to compute stuff. Okay, so recall that you have this function of a input x, vector input with n coordinates. You have a point, if you think here, mm -hmm. you have a point A, which has these, uh, oops, there shouldn't be a bar here. Okay, you have a point A, which is, nothing here. Okay, you have a point here, A, which is just these coordinates. And we recall that the directional derivative of f in a direction of u at a point a is u dot the gradient vector if the gradient vector exists. Yes, if the gradient vector doesn't exist, you cannot calculate it this way. But if the gradient vector exists, it it's in this form where u is a unit vector. So far so good? Yeah. Okay. Now what happens if I take u to be the unit vector in the direction of a particular coordinate. So take u to be as basically a unit vector where this is just the ith coordinate. So I pick one coordinate. In that coordinate I put a 1 and I put zeros in all the other coordinates. So this is a unit vector, right? Yeah. Now what does the fact above tell you about the directional derivative in this direction? So what's the directional derivative in the direction of such a vector? Is the same as the same as the ith component of the as the what the ith component of the gradient gradient vector. Yeah, that's what this tells you. But we also know that it's yeah. So that's one part. So so this gradient this direction derivative is the ith component of the gradient vector. But we also know from the definition of direction derivative that it's the same as the partial derivative. Partial derivative. So what we get is what we get we get f sub x i of a1, a2 to so the partial derivative equals the ith coordinate of of what? Of the gradient vector. Of the gradient vector. Yes. So now we are in a good position to say what exactly the gradient vector should be. What is the gradient vector? Since we can do this for every i, right? So oh. what is the gradient vector going to be? So it's f sub x1 of So these are all what are the what are all these things? These are scalar numbers because we are doing everything at a particular point. Mm -hmm. Okay? By the way, I'm, I'm sort of thinking of f both as a function of a vector variable, but also as a function of multiple scalars, because being a function of a vector variable is the same as being a function of multiple variables. Are we here? Yeah. So it's a vector with n coordinates, and what are these coordinates? The, uh, partial, derivatives. the partial derivatives at the point in respect to all the coordinate directions. Now, if you want, you can do this at a generic point, right? So, what would it say? Nabla f of x is fx1 of, of x. I'll just write the shorthand. fx, I mean, I could write x1, comma x2 to xn, but just make it short. fxn of x. And if I want to be even shorter, I could write it in point free notation. What would it say? F sub x1, F sub x2. So, this vector valued function is just a function whose individual coordinates are these scalar functions, which are just the partial derivatives. Another way of thinking of it is that, uh, that this is obtained by adding up 
for each of the coordinates. For each coordinate, you're adding up the partial derivative in that direction. That's sort of the contribution of, of that particular direction. So if you're looking at the ith direction, just somewhere in the dot dot, you have the ith direction. The contribution of the ith direction to the gradient vector is the corresponding partial derivative. Now, what is the obvious sort of caveat to everything I'm saying? Uh, obvious. Well, not obvious, but what what is the what is the subtlety? Is this does is this always true? If you know the partials, can uh, you use that? Oh part? no, because you need all the partials to be true. Well. Okay, so, so let me put it this way. If all the par if all the partials exist, it's not necessary from that that the gradient vector should exist. However, if the partials exist and the gradient vector exists, then in fact these are equal. So this is actually sort of a uh, left to right conditional equal. So so it's actually saying that if the gradient vector exists, then the partials also exist and the gradient vector is given like this. But you could have a situation where the partials exist and the gradient vector doesn't. Let me just uh, say this sort of. So but in the latter case, how can you do you have a explicit form for the for the gradient vector? No, if the gradient vector exists, then it has to be given like this. Mm -hmm. However, you could have points where the gradient vector doesn't exist, but the partials still exist. But if the gradient vector doesn't exist, you don't need a form for it, right? I don't know what you oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I was confused a little, a little bit. That's not what I wanted to ask. What I want to ask, if it is a conditional equality, hmm. does it mean that it's not, um... So just having computed the partials, does you're not sure that the gradient vector actually exists. Okay. But there are some results, there are some conditions under which the gradient vector will exist. So it turns out, we'll talk about this sometime later, but it turns out that if all the partials are continuous functions, then the gradient vector has to exist. And therefore, it has to be given like this. Okay. okay? Which means that yeah. in most practical situations, once you've computed the partials, you also know the gradient vector. Okay, I guess what I wanted to say is that this form is not comprehensive. What do you mean, not comprehensive? What does it not cover? Uh, because it covered one... Oh, right. Yeah, the things it doesn't cover is when the gradient vector doesn't exist, so it won't have a form. Then. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, but 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 there's still this question of how do you know that the gradient? How do you know whether the gradient vector exists? We just compute the partials, and there are some results which say the partials are continuous. So just write that down. It's really a topic later, but for now, just say, if the partials are all continuous, then the gradient vector does exist. Are we here? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to actually sort of use, go back and try to figure out the gradient vector exists as long as the partials are continuous. Okay, now I want to say something more. What about the directional derivative? So what is the directional derivative in the direction of u of f? Uh, let me just do it at a point just for clarity. And let's say, oh, I didn't put it, but let me just make u explicit in terms of coordinates. Okay, what is this? Well, it's u dot the gradient vector, right? Mm -hmm. But now, u dot the gradient vector, now we know actually what the gradient vector looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can actually write it down. It's going to be, you can write it in summation notation. So what is it? Ui. Hmm. And the coordinates of the gradient vector are these, so it's uh, ui times f sub xi xi mm -hmm. of a1, a2. So if the gradient vector exists, so this you have to be really careful. This is true if the gradient vector exists. Even though the gradient vector doesn't come up explicitly in this formula, so just the fact that the partials exist and the fact that the directional derivative exists doesn't tell you that these are equal. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this equality, even though the gradient vector doesn't appear explicitly, this equality depends on the existence of the gradient vector. Okay? So let me just summarize what we have here. So we started off with this formula. 
here, which is true if the gradient vector exists at the point. Then we use that to calculate the, or rather we use that to calculate the gradient vector in terms of the partial derivatives by using, by plugging in u as unit vectors in the coordinate directions. And we got that the coordinates of the gradient vector are just the partial derivatives. And then we wrote it in point free notation, etc. But the, the key, the key caveat was that, that this equality holds only if the gradient vector exists. You can have situations where the partials exist and the gradient vector doesn't. However, if the partials are all continuous, then the gradient vector does exist. Uh -huh. okay. Now, how do you compute the directional derivative? Well, you basically have to use this formula if the gradient vector exists. But now, since we have the explicit formula for the gradient vector, we can write it as a, you can simplify that dot product, write it as summation of the coordinate of u times the corresponding partial. But this formula is valid if the gradient vector of f exists. It's not, just the existence of the partials doesn't guarantee to you that this formula will describe the directional derivative. Okay.